Hey guys, 607 here today. I'll be restarting my Minecraft Clip Monaco series with how to set up MCP. So that's the Minecraft Coder Pack, how to set that up, how to set it up with Mod Loader, how to integrate it into Eclipse, which is like a piece of software that makes modding much more easier, and also how to um, sort of how to get this thing called JDK, which sort of allows most of the things in MCP to actually work. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you what to download and the first thing of that download list is Java JDK. So to get to this page I'm on right now you just google Java JDK and there should be a link saying Java SE Downloads but I'll have a link to this page anyway in the description. Um, on here there's a few like kind of logo things, some buttons, links and stuff. What you look at is where it says Hello Java SE Downloads, Java Platform Standard Edition and it should say Java SE 7 Update 9 or whatever update version there is at time of you watching it. And there should be two downloads, JDK and JRE. JRE is Java Runtime Environment, which is what your computer should already have, or you wouldn't be in playing Minecraft. JDK is what we want. So we click download just below where it says JDK. Wait for the page to load. Here you want the top one, which is just the development kit and then the update number. Accept the agreement first, and then you click the download you want. So Windows X64 for 64 bit Windows, Windows X86 for 32 bit um, Windows, and then obviously here's some Solaris, Mac, Linux. Linux and stuff, but I've got Windows X64, so I'll click that to download it, and it downloads a setup file called JDK, whatever name and then whatever version you um, selected. Next thing you'll need is MCP, which is Minecraft Coder Pack, um, which is the thing that allows you to um, turn Minecraft files into stuff you can mod and then turn it back into classes that you can put for download for people to install. To get to this page, you just search MTP and it should come up with MTP releases, Minecraft Coder Pack. It should look a bit like a wiki page as well, but I'll have a link to this page anyway in the description. And then you want to click where it says releases, MCP, and then whatever version there is, so click that. And it says here at time recording, you can find MCP 7.23 for Minecraft 1.45. You click that, or you click the mirror if that's not working, and it should download a zip archive. It looks like this because I've got WinRAR installed, but if you don't have WinRAR, it'll be a zip archive that we have loads of files in that I'll talk to you about later on. The next thing we'll need to download is Mod Loader which is like this kind of API, it's mod slash API for Minecraft which allows you to do, it's mainly for modders, allows you to do loads of things in Minecraft much easier than it would usually be without Mod Loader. But obviously if a mod's made with Mod Loader and you want to install that mod then you will obviously need to install Mod Loader as well. But anyway to get to here you just search Mod Loader in Google and it's come up with Sugami's mods in the Minecraft forum, but I'll have a link to this page anyway in the description. You scroll down to where it says Mod Loader, and um, the version now is 1.4.5. You can either click the AdFly one, which um, sort of supports the maker, or you click Download Direct, which just makes it a bit quicker, but it doesn't support Rusugami. And it should download a .zip archive with loads of classes in. The very last thing we need to download is Eclipse, which is a piece of software that allows you to mod Minecraft once we've got the files um, all extracted and stuff, or decompiled as we call it. Once all the files are decompiled, we integrate it into Eclipse, and Eclipse allows us to mod, mod in Java much more easier. It's sort of like, how my friend says in another video, it's sort of like a spell checker because it allows you to like correct things that are wrong and it tells you how to correct it but at the same time it sort of makes everything look organised and easier to mod so you come to this page eclipse.org go to downloads tab and then there's a load of downloads the only two you really need to look at are the top ones eclipse ide for java e developers or eclipse ide for java developers so the top one you don't really need because most stuff in that you won't even need so it's better to go for this 150 megabyte one I need to select your version of Windows, which is whether be that would be 32-bit or 64-bit. Download that, and it should download this uh, another zip archive. So once you've got those four files downloaded, and those three that are zip archives extracted, which makes it easier to use later on. Once you've got all that done, we can now get started setting up MCP. So the first thing we need to do is set up Java JDK. So that's the uh, uh, it's not like JRE, which is what you use to run Java stuff. It's a development kit which allows you to do Java commands, which in MCP include decompiling Java, recompiling it, and turn it into classes, as well as many other things. So we need to get that set up that we downloaded earlier, and just double click it. And if the user account control thing appears, just click yes. Click next. 
uh, leave whatever's how it's downloaded there. You can change the di destination, but I'll leave it to my C drive and click next, and that will download Java. And it should take about two to five minutes, depending on how fast your computer and your writing speed is. So you can click close, and that's the Java Development Kit files installed in computer. So I stress that it's just the files and not the actual JDK installed, and I'll explain right now why it's not properly installed yet. Now, the reason why the Java Development Kit isn't properly installed into your computer is because it's just installed the files into your computer, but it hasn't done anything called setting a path, which means it's like telling the computer where to look for certain files. So, to prove to you that these files haven't been found yet, go to start type in cmd and it should come up with program cmd click on that and then type into here C, um, java c sorry java c click enter and it says here java c is not recognizing the internal external command operable program or batch file that's because uh, it cannot find it because there's no path been set to these jdk files we just installed so that's what we're going to do now which is set in a path to our jdk files so before we set that path we need to actually find a location the location of our jdk files even that we can put as our path we're going to enter later so we need to find where we installed it if you use the default directory of jdk it will go local disk and then program files if you use 64 bit and program 86 if you've got 32 bit and if you're running a 32 bit system it'll just be program files but i use a 64 bit version on a 64 bit system so it'll be inside program files and then java and then jdk bin and then with this address here you want to click any space near there and it should turn into like stuff you can copy so we have that path copied ready for us to set on our computer so to get to that uh, area where we set our path we need to go to start and right click computer and click properties then we need to go to advanced system settings on the left and then here we need to go to advanced tab which should have, should have also automatically been selected anyway and at the bottom it says environment and environment and variables you click that and then you go to system variables the bottom half and you press P on the keyboard and it should take you to path you want to click edit and then here's where we want to pass paste this um uh this uh location to our JDK now I stress to you that if there's any paths already here do not delete those because if you do your computer could mess up a lot instead what we do is at the end of the last path we put a semicolon and then we get this uh, file this location of our JDK and paste that after the semicolon with no spaces whatsoever so it goes semicolon straight after the location to our JDK files once that's done you click OK OK again OK once more and that's our, J our path set to the Java JDK files now to prove to you that these um, this path has been successfully set we need to go to start CMD again and type again Java C and as you see loads of commands appear you probably won't know what most of these mean but the fact that they appear means that it's found JDK and loaded all these commands that it can offer CMD so that is Java JDK installed onto your system